Welcome, everybody. We are about to get started. We'll uh, probably have a couple more seconds and um, we'll get started. Uh, I'm Ann Keen. I am the Global Education Lead for Zoom. And we have um, today's session is cross country ski with Zoom across campus. Uh, we really have put together a fantastic panel uh, for you. We wanted to talk uh, about Zoom in a way that is beyond teaching and learning. Teaching and learning is incredibly important, but we realize that you are using Zoom all across the campus. So we have some great panelists that I'd like to, to share with you. Um, today's host is gonna be Jason Mobley. He is our higher education solutions lead for Zoom. Welcome, Jason. Hey, good morning, Ann. How are you? Great, thanks. And then we also have some panelists um, that are gonna talk about how they are using Zoom um, system-wide um, at their individual university and also across the campus. So we have with us today, Michael Berman, who is the CIO at the Chancellor's Office for California State University. Welcome, Michael. Thank you, great to be here with you. Thank you. And Judith Scully Callahan. And Judith is a researcher and professor at the Business School at the University of Florida. Welcome, Judith. Thank you, Anne. Good to be here. And then we have Tracy Manier, who is the Vice President for Enrollment Management at St. Edwards University in Austin, Texas. And uh, Tracy is going to talk to us about how she sees um, the business and continuity of business and using Zoom across the campus. And I think everybody's going to talk about that. So we're going to kick off the session today with Jason talking about um, all the different Zoom um, solutions that we have that constitute what we call the Unified Communications um, as a Service Strategy across Zoom. So I'm gonna hand it over to Jason to kick it off and then we're gonna hear from our panelists and then we'll have time for questions at the end. So welcome, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Anne. Today we'll cover teaching and learning, including new educational features. Then we'll move into faculty and staff communications, campus communications, campus safety, and then campus workflow integrations. And then at the end, as Anne alluded earlier, we're gonna have a fireside chat with our expert guest panel. So Zoom was built as a video first unified communications platform. Zoom has risen to the challenge of enhancing teaching and learning through the pandemic. Our unified platform serves the need of the entire university from student engagement, virtual classes, university communications, professional development, and teaching and learning. We recently launched uh, several new educational features that enhance that student experience. So breakout rooms is one of our most popular features in the Zoom meetings. And we're constantly adding more functionality to provide the best experience to our users. We recently added the option for meeting participants to self-select which breakout rooms they would like to join. So previously, the meeting host would have to assign a participant to a breakout room. Now with self-select breakout rooms, the option is enabled by the host and participants can move freely between the breakout rooms without needing the host help. We also launched about two weeks ago what we call host and co-host parity, which means that your co-host actually has the same rights as the host in terms of controlling breakout rooms. We also launched slides as a virtual background, and this is under your advanced settings in Zoom. So this allows a professor to upload a slide deck, and then it actually overlays that professor on top. So this young lady is the professor teaching. This is actually resizable. So she starts out small, she can make herself really big. So if you're saying, hey, I'm making a big point, you can point at graphics. It's an engaging way to interact with your students. Also from a class management best practices, we implemented a security icon at the bottom of your Zoom toolbar. This allows you to lock your virtual classroom. You have the ability to remove students who are disrupting class. You can control screen sharing. You can lock down the, the chat and you can report anyone that should not be in the meeting. Uh, a professor can also manage students audio and video. So you can turn off a student's audio or video and then turn them back on with the consent of the student. We also implemented customizable gallery view. So we've always had gallery view. This is the ability to, to allow you to see up to 49 different students on the screen at one time. Now you can easily drag and drop your video tiles and re rearrange them in an order in which the students appear in your gallery view. So how does this help? You can do this in a virtual seating chart. So you can choose students to follow your view for a custom seating arrangement. And this is especially handy for activities that involve going around the room in a certain order or placing the students into virtual groups. We implemented multi-pinning. Now we've always had pinning, 
But with multi-pinning, it allows a host to pin up to nine other students on a screen for a customized personal view. So teachers and students using sign language won't necessarily appear as the active speaker in the Zoom classroom. So with multi-pinning, students who are deaf or even hard of hearing, they can pin both the teacher and the sign language interpreter on the screen for a more accessible learning experience. If the teacher spotlights a screen, the student's pinned videos still appear in their previous order across the top. Now, similar to multi-pinning, we have multi-spotlight. You can spotlight now up to nine different participants in a Zoom meeting. So multi-spotlight allows you to create a customized, personal, focused group that's visible to the entire class. So this is great when you're working on group presentations where you wanna select a group of students to present to the class together. We rolled out high fidelity music mode designed to provide professional grade audio and optimize all kinds of sound and music and use cases happenings in your Zoom meetings. So high fidelity music mode delivers professional audio from a single Zoom client streaming to your listeners. So how does this help? Virtual music lessons, a, a teacher can actually hear the wrong or right tones the students makes. So learning is easy, effective and clear over Zoom, even live performances. This feature helps your audience feel closer to the live experience where they may have missed something amid social distance mandates, mandates and performing arts classes. We recently launched live transcription for K through 12 schools, and we plan to launch higher education institute, uh, institutions at the end of this month. So if you're the host of the meeting with live transcriptions enabled, you actually click on the live transcription button, enable auto transcription, and then you actually have an active subtitle as you speak without the need of a third party um, closed captioning service. Also students that have accessibility issues, or let's say you have students that are learning English as a second language, this works perfect for them. So look forward to live transcription here very, very soon. We're constantly working on more features for our LMS integrations. And through LTI 1.3, we will allow features like syncing assessment scores from a third party tool directly back to your LMS, adding the potential for secure proctored exams and the ability to communicate roles based on what type of the role the user is in the LMS. So for example, a TA will automatically become a co-host in a Zoom meeting. Next, we'll transition to our remote and hybrid Zoom room solutions. So what is the main difference between teaching from a Zoom room or a Zoom meeting to a Zoom room? Professors have been teaching from their laptops and desktops for much of the pandemic. This method is good, but how do we trans transform teaching into a more immersive experience. So Zoom Rooms take Zoom meetings into the classroom by supporting large displays, whether they're TVs or even projectors. You have the ability to use high definition cameras that support features like auto framing that allows professors to be mobile and walk around the room in an engaging fashion. Zoom Rooms for Touch allows uh, professors to annotate with their finger or even a pen for classes like math and science and other courses where Whiteboarding needs to be digitized. And then lastly, the ability to have room-based audio to leverage classroom discussions with all students involved being heard. Now, here's an example of Harvard University's Zoom room installation that shows three screens where the professor can see all students for a more immersive classroom experience. If you're running a hybrid solution, we have this example where you can run a single screen in a 45 degree angle in the front of the room where the students at home can actually see the students in the room and the professor at the same time, and these solutions can be annotatable. If you actually need to have multiple displays, we have solutions that support multiple displays and multiple cameras. So you can have a camera that shoots at the professor and another camera that shoots at the, uh, the students in the classroom. And the professor can even have a confidence monitor to see the remote students and even a companion whiteboard for annotations. So next let's move to faculty and staff communicating faster using our platform. So Zoom Chat is a powerful instant messaging platform that allows for persistent messaging, the power of presence and the ability to elevate a chat into a Zoom phone call or even a Zoom meeting. So let's say I'm talking with a staff member from IT um, help desk over chat. With a click of a button, we're now in a Zoom meeting. With a remote control enable, they can then take control of the user's desktop for remote support. Zoom chat also supports file sharing and we can leverage chat channels. 
Chat channels allows for group messaging, whether internal or external to the school. So you can easily share files or images, star important messages, and search content from past conversations. So in this example, I have a chat channel for financial aid and the executive council. I can see the present status of the members and easily add new members to the channel as needed. Another powerful feature of the Zoom ecosystem is the power of presence. Presence allows a user to see if someone is in a meeting, presenting on a Zoom phone call, or if they're unavailable. And I also can use a feature called notify me when available. So if Michael is in a meeting, I can be notified when he is available for chat, as you can see here. So next, let's move to campus communication. How does a university leverage Zoom phone as a unified communications tool? So with Zoom, we started with meetings, chat, and webinar, and then we added a host of conference room features like Zoom rooms, conference room connectors, digital signage, and our scheduling displays. We rounded it out with a host of development features like our APIs, our SDKs, and the app marketplace. Then we naturally created Zoom phone as a robust cloud-based voice over IP phone system. The power of our unified communications platform is we deliver a host of communication tools to take your university to the next level and to define that smart campus experience. Zoom phone is a modern cloud-based PBX using the same high definition quality codecs that we use for Zoom video. During the pandemic, universities were displaced from their on-premise phone system and faculty and staff had to forward their phones to their mobile devices, which creates a privacy issue. Zoom phone allows you to make and receive phone calls from the desktop soft client, your mobile application, or from a desk phone, whether you're on or off campus. We support features like call masking, call recording, number blocking. You can even elevate a phone call into a meeting. We support intercom and overhead paging solutions, and we have SMS and MMS built right in. Using call masking, you no longer have to call a student back with your cell phone number. You can now call with your work phone number, the main school number, or even a call queue like financial aid or the ITS help desk while protecting the mobile identity of the faculty or staff. We support ad hoc and automatic call recording. So let's say a professor gets a threatening phone call. You can immediately record that call to help deescalate the issue. And yes, an audible prompt is given to the caller that the call will be recorded. We even provide transcription of that recording built right in. Using SMS, educators can text from their Zoom phone client without sharing their personal cell phone number. So a professor can send out group texts to students all through their desktop and mobile clients. Using the power of our unified application experience, educators can elevate a phone call directly into a video meeting with a click of a button, and you can even elevate a phone call directly into a Zoom room. So now let's discuss how Zoom can enhance campus safety and security because, of course, at this point, security is paramount. We realize at Zoom that campus safety and E911 support is a top priority across campuses nationwide. Our robust nomadic E911 service allows for routing to the public safety answering point, the 911 operator, with very granular address tracking and enhanced features. So let me show you uh, how that kind of works. Now, what ends up happening is in this example, a user actually calls 911 and if I'm part of the campus police, I actually receive a call directly on my Zoom client telling me that the caller is calling 911 and it actually tells me their address. I can listen to that call. I can even barge into that call because maybe a road needs to be blocked for an ambulance or other safety measures. In addition, through chat and email integration, the internal safety response team can also notify with a chat alert and an email to telling the emergency alert address and network data and GPS of the user. And for example, with Zoom digital signage, you can now push an alert to that sign. So for example, if there's a fire on floor five, we can tell the users to evacuate. Uh, God forbid there was an active shooter situation, you would be able to leverage Zoom digital signage for emergency alerting. Zoom phone also supports Carey's Law and Ray Bombs Act from a compliance perspective. And both of these acts have future compliance end dates and many on-premise phone systems are not compliant with nomadic E911 and sending granular information like building number, floor number and room number to the public safety answering point. Through campus workflow integrations, we can use add-ons, APIs and SDKs to enhance your overall Zoom solution. 
Our Zoom marketplace has over 250 integrations, including LMS integrations like Canvas, Blackboard, Schoology, Moodle, and Sakai. We round out the marketplace with a myriad of educational-based integrations to take your institution to the next level of communications. So take a look today at marketplace.zoom.us. Zoom Apps brings the best of breed applications into the Zoom experience for a seamless productivity and engaging experiences. So how are these different from apps already available in the Zoom marketplace? Existing marketplace apps are integrations that connect to Zoom from within the apps. Think of them like workflow connectors that enable users to leverage Zoom like Canvas. The new Zoom Apps integrations enable Zoom users to seamlessly use the apps like Asana, for example, within Zoom before, during, and after a Zoom meetings. Developers are steadily building apps to use in Zoom with one click to present in a meeting and you can send a Zoom app to engage participants collaboratively. Current apps that are being enhanced are Asana, Coursera, Dropbox, Kahoot, Miro, Kaltura, ServiceNow, Survey, SurveyMonkey, and Zendesk, and many more are launching this year. So let me play a video and give you an example of a Zoom app like Asana. Video conferencing has become a regular part of our lives. But just like any meeting, a video conference needs to be worthwhile and actionable. Asana and Zoom are working together to make meetings better. Asana is a work management tool where teams create plans to accomplish work and meet goals. Here's how it works with Zoom. Let's say a team is working on a website relaunch and they need to get together to discuss the plan. In Asana, they can create a Zoom meeting right from the planning task in their project. Everyone will know what the meeting's about and have access to relevant files. When it's time for the call, the team joins the meeting. In Zoom, attendees have an Asana's app to help them capture action items and take notes without leaving their window. Once the call is done, the transcript and meeting recording are saved to the Asana task so the team can refer back to it with a clear record of who's doing what by when. With focused and clear meetings, the team can move work forward faster. That's how Asana and Zoom are working together to make your work together that much better. So next we'll talk about on Zoom. We launched a public beta for on Zoom, which is an online events platform and marketing uh, marketplace for paid Zoom users who want to create, host, and monetize classes, continuing education, or even fundraisers using the Zoom meeting platform. The on Zoom platform specifically helps universities schedule and host one-time events an event series or drop-ins for up to a thousand attendees. You can list and sell tickets, share and promote public events via email and social media, and reach new audience beyond the business geographical location. So visit onzoom.com to learn more about our OnZoom experience and share your passions or unique experience with students, alumni, or even the public while in enabling new revenue sources. So now let's move to our fireside chat so let me stop sharing the content here and uh, let me pose some questions to the panel. So let's start with you, Michael. Um, what are some, or how are you using Zoom to enable your university as a smart multi-campus environment? Oh, well, thank you, Jason. Um, first of all, it's a pleasure to be with you. Um, I have to say when I got up this morning, I thought, can I, after everything that happened yesterday, am I going to go forward and talk about Zoom today? And I decided I, I was, but um, just a, a shout out to everybody at um, the, the, the challenges that we're all facing right now and how it must be affecting all of us emotionally. Um, when, when we went into um, um, March of last year, one of the very fortunate decisions that we had made before that was to have Zoom licenses across all 23 campuses. For those of you, I know some of you already know this, but you may not all, all be aware of the scope of the California State University. We have 23 campuses ranging over about a, a 450 mile radius, uh, well, 250 mile radius, um, and um, with over 500,000 faculty, staff, and students. We have just under half a million uh, students right now. And we had them all licensed when we started. So this was an incredible advantage for us that we knew that everybody had the opportunity to use Zoom. Now, of course, not everybody had used Zoom before March, and we saw a huge increase in, in, in the volume of use, which I'll show you in a minute because the numbers are kind of amazing. But 
Um, it's it's just remarkable how the fact that everybody knew that you could get a hold of anyone else in the CSU and hold a video conference with them with relatively little friction, what a difference that made for us going into March. And I just uh, I, I made a, a list of a few of the things that, that we did. Um, and, and by the way, I'm not sure how long I'm supposed to go. So if I start going too long, somebody chat at me or wave at me or something and I'll and I'll wrap up. But the first thing that 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 was really remarkable to me was, as you can imagine, the way we're structured, we have 23 presidents and a chancellor. And there were a lot of decisions that had to be made on a daily basis, starting in March and really going all the way until well, till today. <laughs> and um, but but back in March and April, the 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 president and the chancellor were literally meeting every single day and all those meetings were on Zoom. And um, the, the fact that you had 23 presidents who are pretty senior people and by and large, not really technically astute, you know, with due respect to all for the talents that they have, that they were getting on these Zoom meetings every day with our chancellor. And I wasn't, we weren't getting any complaints. I mean, they were able to do this with virtually no problem, it was just amazing to me. This summer, in order to prepare for the fall, since we'd made the commitment in April, in uh, late April, early May, that we were going to be 100% or virtually 100% online in the fall, we we had a, a huge effort across the system to train faculty, and we ended up of our approximately 55,000 faculty, um, over 60% of them got specific training on how to teach online over the summer. Of course, some of them were already quite adept and knowledgeable about how to do it, and they didn't really need the training. But the majority of our faculty had not taught online or used virtual tools to teach. And so we were able to get um, you know, well over 25,000 faculty online for training. And of course, that wasn't exclusively Zoom. We were using Canvas and other tools. But um, the ability to bring those faculty together in groups to um, provide workshops and training uh, was huge. And that was taking place all across our campuses as well. That was the so we saw that uh, that tremendous effort. Uh, we didn't have 25,000 in one Zoom session. We had lots and lots of sessions with 40 and 50 faculty, you know, hundreds of sessions. Um, another really interesting use case that we saw just recently was when a campus decided to make a, a very rapid move to um, do two factor authentication because of um, becoming aware of some external security threats and realizing that this was really important for them to accomplish. and. They'd started down the road and they have, this campus has about 15 to 20,000 students. And there's something like 20% of them had, had become authenticated, but they, they put a hard stop and they said, okay, before we go into Thanksgiving break, we're gonna get all of our active students on duo two-factor authentication. Well, for those of you who understand how authentication works, you have to know who the person is that you're authenticating, right? You can't just go by an email and say, you know, here, here's your key. Now you have another key because if you don't know who that person at the other end of the email is, you're, you may be giving a key to somebody who really is not supposed to be in your environment. Yeah. So they set up Zoom with breakout rooms um, and they, they were able to, um, in about uh, two weeks, get 12,000 students onto Zoom, uh, onto duo authentication using Zoom. Um, and again, because of the ubiquity of Zoom, we were able to have folks at the chancellor's office help out. So uh, towards the end of that, in two days, we got about 2,000 students um, onto two-factor authentication because we could meet face-to-face. -face, we could act, ask them to hold up an ID so we could see who they were. And it provided a, for, for what we needed, a reasonable level of assurance that the person we were talking to is who they said they were about as much as if they'd walked into an office and shown an ID card at a desk. San Diego State has a, a, a great initiative to provide virtual front desks um, so in their HR department, in their career services, they figured out how to the, the, uh, use Zoom and create a set of working practices and protocols in order to have a, 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 a online Zoom session that runs all day long when their office is open. Anybody can click on a link and drop in. They get, they get greeted promptly by somebody. And then um, if they need to do some kind of detailed work or go into something that might be private, um, they drop into breakout rooms where they can meet one-to-one -one with somebody and um, get the work done that they need to do. Um, and again, um, what so many of these groups are finding is it's far more efficient to do this than it actually was to do it in person. Um, we're also using um, 
um, Zoom for uh, to keep our students connected with the campuses and to try to provide some entertainment in these very difficult times. So um, uh, CSU Northridge has a couple of really interesting projects that they're doing. One is their outdoor adventure group. You can imagine outdoor adventure. It's quite a they're they're people who normally they're getting together and they're literally going and hiking Half Dome or um, um, they're they're going to Utah to uh, uh, climb peaks in Zion. Well, they can't do that right now together, obviously. Um, so they're doing virtual tours. So they've set up virtual tours where one person will go out into the into the uh, into an area. They actually had a small group went and you know climbed Half Dome and and recorded it and showed the film and then walked through with the group like described the experience and talked about what the challenges were and 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 what they did and showed the pictures. They're also doing uh, it's at at CSUN and I know other campuses are doing it as well. They're doing entertainment like DJ shows and music. Um, so the, the the student organization that normally is providing productions on campus is doing it through Zoom. I mentioned before I'm familiar with the high fidelity music mode. Being a musician myself, uh, huge improvement um, for where we were in March to be able to provide really high quality music. If you know how to set it up properly, you can really make your your stuff sound great on Zoom now. Uh, those of you who were, saw the music last night could see the, the musicians that had a better studio setup and connection. You know, really it was just outstanding sound that's that's available. So those are some of the things that we're doing. Um, you know, uh, we could have a whole other session where we could talk about what we wish Zoom would, would do and things they would add. But I do have to say, if you just look at Jason's presentation, the rate at which Zoom is innovating and addressing the challenges that are out there is really impressive. Um, and so we know when, um, when we have a problem or concern, we need to do something. Um, we get a hold of Zoom, and um, generally they're providing solutions almost as fast as we can think of the problem. So, it's it's been fantastic for us, and um, has made a huge difference in our ability to respond to what we're going through right now. So, with that, let me um, turn it over to somebody else to talk about what they're doing. Yeah, excellent, Michael. I love the scale that you guys can perform this at, and all the different use cases. That's excellent, uh, Judith. I'll move to you. Um, how have you used Zoom from a graduate student and career advancement perspective? Oh, the, uh, you know, this is one platform that I actually look forward to the updates. The, we had, again, at UF, we had the program prior to, or the platform prior to uh, COVID hitting. And so there was a hard stop where it was like, okay, everything is now going to become virtual. Um, but it was, it's everything from advising um, how to negotiate a job offer, whether you're doing it to a group of people or doing it one-on-one -on -one where you're talking about a specific offer that they have in hand, and then how are they going to approach it? You know, career coaching, um, you know, how are they going to take it to the next level? What do they need to do? We have leadership development sessions where we come, the students will come together. Um, and, and again, they could be wherever they are. Um, and uh, various workshops. Um, and what we're finding is that attendance has actually increased. So participation levels, because we're using Zoom, it's the cost of participating is much lower. We have what we call parking permits, but we call them really sort of um, hunting permits because it doesn't necessarily mean that there's one available. So um, students are, are much more likely to participate in these kinds of events now that we've got these platforms or the platforms working and many of them will continue in this way afterwards. Um, the awards and recognition ceremonies, you know, at the end of the semester where you're acknowledging students who've done exceptional things is one area where now parents are involved, you know, whereas they couldn't necessarily be before. Um, but we also hold uh, graduations virtually um, using Zoom. So it's, you know, um, I think where I see the most pivotal is the, the um, diversity initiatives that we have where we've got specific students that we've identified as having high potential but their dropout rates are higher. So how do we bring them in and how do we engage them more? And it used to be face-to-face -face and one-on-one -on -one, and now there's small groups, there's Zoom. Um, and what we're, what they've reported is that they're more likely to show up. So they're, they're more engaged than they were before. And they're also more um, 
open about what's actually going on. And I don't know if it's because, you know, as, as Michael was talking about it, emotions are just high or, or if it's that we've got the additional filter of the screen and the monitor in front of us, but people are more willing to share what's really going on so that we can implement solutions that solve the problem rather than just putting band-aids on it. Yeah, I, I, love, I love hearing the fact that you can actually get more participation using Zoom and the inclusion as well. So Tracy, I'd like to throw a question over to you. Uh, what are ways that you're using Zoom to increase enrollment or even recruitment um, at your campus? Uh, great question and, and thank you for having me, Jason. Zoom really has been a lifeline for us since the beginning of the pandemic. Uh, you know, the, the pandemic didn't um, hit any, any industry at a, in an ideal time, certainly, but it was a very interesting um, timing for the area of college admissions because it was really the kickoff to what we call the yield season. And this is where we work with students to make their final choice about colleges. Um, here in Austin, we shut down the Friday before spring break. And that was really the big kickoff season to the campus visit season that lasts through that May 1st deadline. And we typically will see over a thousand students visiting our campus in that six week period. So we had to move very quickly to find a way to complement that experience in a virtual format. And the ease of the Zoom platform allowed us to do that very quickly. We were up and running really by that next Tuesday, I believe, doing presentations and webinars and info sessions with students and their families. And one thing that we really found in all of this, issues of, of access and equity are so important and critical to college admissions and to financial aid. And we were really able to reach students that we could not reach. The campus visit experience is by its very nature inequitable. Um, it, it relies on families having to take off work and travel um, sometimes a great distance to come to a campus and to visit in person. And this really allowed students and parents in a very quick, sometimes 30 minute format to engage with the campus to really interact with a variety of people across campus. So that was a real silver lining for us as we were able to reach students who otherwise would not have the opportunity to visit campus during that time and, and all the way through the summer and into the fall. We have actually hosted since the middle of March, 326 webinars through Zoom um, that are specific to recruitment. And to put that in context, normally in that time frame we may have had probably about like 50 to 60 in-person visit programs um, because of course in-person programs, you're having to um, reserve a room and set up the room and order catering and um, do all the things that you're doing to host someone on campus. And the virtual platform just really allowed us to churn out a lot of experiences for students and that allowed us to expand and segment the content so we could really involve more faculty across campus. We could do small sessions that related to a very specific major or a specific service on campus that students might be interested in learning more about. And <coughs> that has just really expanded our reach and allowed us to meet students with the information that they're seeking in this process. So what, what I'm hearing is the fact that you're actually able to serve more students in a more efficient way and be more inclusive, which, which I find fascinating. Thank you for that. Michael, what are ways that you're using from an analytical perspective of your Zoom meeting data? Well, that's, that's a great cue. Um, you know, with, with 23 campuses as well as the chancellor's office and about 100 people who are in one way or another helping support, directly support the use of Zoom, um, usually as part of their role as either a, a systems person or somebody in the um, faculty uh, support center. Um, being able to get statistics and analytics about use has, has been really important. Um, and while it hasn't always been ex exactly the way um, we'd like, in some ways it's been harder than, than we would like, um, we have been able to get a lot of good data about the use of Zoom. I was gonna go ahead and share the slide that shows our overall use because it is pretty amazing. Um, and it's, it's been impressive, um, not just to those of us on the system side, but to the senior leadership to see the increase in use. Um, and I, it, it's interesting because I saw a statistic from Zoom that said about a 3,000% 3, 3, 
increase in use worldwide. That actually brought us up to about April, but you can see September, which was our peak, when we're, we're getting just short of a billion minutes a month in uh, Zoom wow. sessions. Um, it's, it's just remarkable um, the amount of use we have. And, um, you know, we've had every problem probably that every one of you has had at some time, but the number of problems is tiny compared to uh, the usage that we're seeing. So we are looking forward. And I, again, I know working with Zoom that you're continuing to uh, improve the ability to get information about the events that, that occur about the use of Zoom and it's extremely helpful to us um, to be able to see at a, a global level what's going on with our use as an enterprise. Um, you know, Zoom really grew from uh, almost a, a person to person tool. I remember when Zoom first came out, it was really emphasizing individual adoption rather than enterprise. So it's been a, a road for Zoom to become a true enterprise uh, tool. Um, but you're just about there and um, we're continuing to uh, 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 see improvements in that. So um, that's going to be something that we're going to um, certainly be working with and, and pushing Zoom to increase the ability to understand how the tool is being used when we're looking at, especially when we're looking at it at a, a very high level. Yeah, thank you for sharing that graphic. It's fascinating to see the adoption and the increase over time uh, at the CSU. Uh, Judah, speaking of data and analytics, how have you leveraged Zoom data to analyze the participation of activities across campus? What they're, um, the level of, you can do it at a micro level or a macro level. So what we, what we've just seen with Michael is the macro level. And at the micro level, you can take any given event where you have a planned level of participation in terms of the numbers of students and then opening up the chat allows you to find out how much interaction is really going on there. I mean, you can actually track the level of student participation in all of these various events. So it really allows you a huge amount of flexibility. Um, and to an adaptability to whatever it is that you're trying to achieve all the way down to like in a classroom, how many students spoke, spoke or, or chatted during that particular event. So it's, it's actually extraordinarily helpful. Thank you. Tracy, what are uh, some unique ways that you've used Zoom's ecosystem outside the classroom to enhance overall communications? Well, speaking as just sort of a member of the senior leadership team, Zoom has been so helpful in allowing us to communicate across campus and to all constituents. There were so many key decisions that we were making very quickly early on in the pandemic. There were also other large scale plans that we were trying to evolve over time. And one thing we, we learned, I think we've all learned, is that you, you couldn't really over communicate as an institution to your various constituents. And so Zoom really allowed us to identify um, segmented audiences like faculty and staff or alumni or parents of current students, um, also you know, prospective students as I spoke about before, but we could roll out a series of senior leadership communication webinars to address the concerns of these various audiences. And I think it was really helpful because it allowed a session where people knew it was for them. Sometimes it was upwards of, you know, five or 600 people, but the senior leadership was there and we were present much like we all are today, answering questions that related to our, our respective areas and addressing concerns that were coming through from the various audiences and in, in the chat function. So it was a really helpful way for us to get in front of large groups of people and to say, we have a plan, we understand your concerns, we're here for you. And the university is moving forward in, in a way that will be um, sustainable for the future and will help address all of the concerns that our students might have about safety and, and, and health. Yeah, I, I appreciate that perspective. So at this time we have we have about five minutes left. So uh, Brittany's gonna pin all of our panelists on the screen. And what I would ask those of you in the audience is if you, if you have a question, you can definitely uh, come on video, unmute, but uh, ask a question for one of the panelists or, or throw it out and one of them will answer. Uh, so again, this is kind of the ask the audience section. So uh, any questions from the audience at this time? Feel free to unmute and ask your question. Don't be shy. 
I know that a lot of questions have been answered in the chat. Uh, uh, Paul, Austin. No, I'm not going to be shy. <laughs> it's ahead, such a great panel and uh, loaded question here. What are some of the most positive transformations you've seen in terms of our relationships between learning facilitators and learners as a result of the pandemic, and especially with the use of tools like Zoom? Who wants to take that question? I'll start. The the I think that it's um, it, it's faculty specific. I think that it's the more available we are. Um, so you know, Zoom will time out at forty five minutes. So what I tell them is that when I have office hours, I, I literally am in my office, and and they as soon as I get the email saying somebody's in that room. Um, and I always use the same room for office hours because I'm in the same room when I'm in my office. Um, so some of the ways that I'm leveraging that one-on-one -on -one with students is, um, you know, trying to do it as much face-to-face -face as I can. Um, the phone has really become, I literally don't even have it within my hand's reach, like the office phone. I, it, it's not a part of my day-to-day -day functioning. I can go many days and never touch the office phone. Um, I use Zoom every day. And, um, and I find that that is one way that students can feel more connected um, in, in this environment. Michael or Tracy, want to add anything to that? I'll, I'll just say that, um, you know, Zoom doesn't solve every problem. Um, Zoom is not necessarily the platform that you want to build all your instruction around, depending on your campus. But it also has a low barrier to entry. Um, and in a situation where we had to help so many faculty and so many students get used to learning at a distance, it really did provide a cornerstone that people could adopt very quickly. I have to mention too, one of the things that I like about Zoom is it's, it's very good with a wide range of bandwidth. And um, you know we, we have a big chunk of our students, probably 20% or more of our students do not have good reliable broadband at home. But you know they can they can in many cases even even because of, even in that situation they can still uh, use their cell phone with a with a, a phone connection they can use an unreliable connection that maybe the video is not smooth but they can get the audio because Zoom does a pretty good job of privileging the audio over the video they can turn the video off so um, that's been really important so you know providing that kind of cornerstone is something that's familiar. Speaking face to face is a form of interaction that we're familiar with, and um, you you could have lots of discussions about how um, being on Zoom is not exactly the same as speaking face to face for all kinds of technical and social reasons. But it's familiar and it works well. As I said, you know the fact that we had presidents meeting daily, um, immediately, um, and so the, it's it's been something that you you don't need to learn a lot to start using Zoom to work with your students, and then. Over time, people are we're introducing more different modalities and different tools, you know, and, and emphasizing building courses using online tools like Canvas, other learning management systems, or outside the learning management system using other internet tools. But um, the the fact that you can speak to your instructor face to face when you need to, or your advisor, or somebody in enrollment services, or career services, or whatever, has just it's been a lifeline. It really has. Well, thank, thank you for uh, joining today, panelists, Michael, Judy, Tracy. Uh, I really, truly appreciate you from Zoom and from Ann to uh, have you guys come on and share your experiences. And for those of you that joined today, thank you again. Uh, look for a lot of new features coming uh, on the Zoom platform, specifically to education in the next uh, uh, few months. Uh, Barbara, I'll turn it back over to you. Ann, would you like to say any final words? Yeah, I do. Um, again, thank you for our panelists and everybody joining us. Um, and one of the things I wanted to say is to look out for is that one of our, one of our big, big um, initiatives, and really it's, it's foundational, is that Zoom um, is opening up our SDK, our APIs. We have um, are doing look out for Zoom apps, which is allowing you to build. So, you, you know, you have a lot of great uh, people at your campuses that love to build and and you can start building specific custom applications um, to enhance Zoom right on top of Zoom using our APIs, our SDKs, and also our Zoom apps. So you can have an in-meeting experience or pull in some of your Zoom apps from the marketplace to really customize your experience, much like we saw with Asana. So we're continuing to enable you because we can't be all, as Michael said, we can't be all things to all people. 
but we want to en uh, enable you to be able to customize it for your experiences and your campus. So stay tuned and watch out for that. And thank you, everybody. Thank you for all our customers and thank you for participating today and keep keep pushing us to be more innovative and to serving you in ways that you know, help, help promote student success. Back to you, Jason. All right. Well, again, we're at the end of our, our time. So again, Barbara, uh, any further words about future sessions? I think I think Donnell has a quick closing message. Go ahead, Donnell. Hello everyone, just want to remind you that we do have another breakout session coming up um, beginning at 1145 and there's also a hackathon at 1230. Please tune in for the closing ceremonies at four o'clock. Thank you everybody. Thank you all. Thank you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year.